Welcome back to Mission Accomplished. My name is Michelle. My name is Garrett. And today, because we want to, we are going to rank every movie in the MCU. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. All 23 movies that have been released. That means phase one, two, and three people. Mm -hmm. Okay? We are going to do this because Michelle and I just sat on our butts and we watched every single, every single one. movie. And in timeline order. In, in timeline order. Which is not release order. Correct. It is timeline order. The order that the movies take place within the timeline of the uh, MCU. Uh, 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 uh. So... Without further ado, let's 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 just jump into it. We decided to watch them all in timeline order because there were a few that I have not seen at all. Michelle hadn't seen most of them. Some of them? Most of them. <laughs> and that's okay. That's why I'm glad we got to watch them together. That was really fun. Can we not say I hadn't seen most of them? I'm embarrassed by that. Why is that embarrassing? I don't think that's embarrassing. There's 23 movies. 23 movies. There's a lot of fucking movies mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, so if you if you're a Marvel fan and haven't seen them all, this is a safe space for you. You can be a fan and only see one of the movies. I don't know. That's true. That's I think true. that's garbage. You're fine. <laughs> Who cares? I guess it does feel weird though because we did an entire superhero series and I hadn't seen all the Marvel movies. Yeah, but you saw the ones that were necessary that's true. for the episode. That's true. I did my research. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we're doing this also just because I've I've wanted to do it for a long time, but we hadn't because it's like so much content. But here we are, guys. For the past, we've been doing this for like a freaking month now, a whole month of watching these films, research, blah blah blah. Warning: there may be mild spoilers ahead. Oh, there there will be spoilers. Um, and there, I don't know if we're gonna talk about Wandavision. Uh, but if we do, I'll we'll spoiler alert before that. But right now, this should only be phase one, two, three. We're not including phase four. However, I might be talking about spoilers in terms of things that might be coming out in the future. So okay, fine. Spoiler alert. We might talk about things that is that are known on the internet about these movies and upcoming sure. films. So just um, be warned. That let's, said, let's jump into yes. it. And if you're watching on YouTube, you guys can see the visual component where we are ranking the films using tier list. So on tier list, we're going to be ranking things A, B, C, D, just like grades in school. Um, but the best category is actually going to be S tier, which I learned today comes before A. And apparently most people know that except for me. But if you hear us rank something as S, it is in fact what we consider to be highest caliber of the MCU. Ad alert, ad alert. Oh yeah. Hit us with that fat ad. Speaking of consuming a ton of content in a short amount of time, thank you so much to Blinkist for being one of our amazing sponsors for today's episode. These days, it can be hard to find the time to sit down and learn more. It's not easy when the likes of social media can be so addictive and time consuming. Hello, TikTok. So you may think you don't have the time to develop yourself. This is where Blinkist comes in. Blinkist is for anyone who cares about learning but doesn't have a lot of time. Blinkist takes the key ideas and insights from over 4,000 nonfiction bestsellers in more than 27 categories and gathers mm -hmm. them together in 15-minute text and audio explainers that help you understand more about core ideas. Last time we were talking about Blinkist, I was telling you guys about how I listened to Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's so nice because you can get through so much content in such a short amount of time. They also have a couple other amazing topics including everything is fucked by mark manson one of my favorite authors as well as the whole 30 by melissa and dallas hartwig right now blinkist has a special offer just for you guys go to blinkist.com slash mission accomplished to start your free seven day trial and get 25 percent off a blinkist premium membership that's blinkist spelled b-l-i-n-k-i-s-t blinkist.com slash mission accomplished to get 25 percent off and a seven day trial Blinkist.com slash mission accomplished. Blinkist.com slash mission accomplished. All right. First movie on the list is Iron Man 1. Um, so Iron Man came out in 2008. This was the kickoff of the MCU directed by Jon Favreau. Uh, really also plays seem, happy. Yes. Yeah, seems to be pretty much responsible for the MCU's success uh, moving forward. Where would you put Iron Man on this list? I mean, Iron Man's a good fucking movie. Okay, I'm going to say Iron Man is A 
for me. Okay. Um, it's a, a f- really good movie. The Return of Robert Downey Jr. It's so good. And I think Iron Man, I mean, Iron Man is one of the best uh superheroes in the entire universe i think iron man as a character is s tier i'm only putting iron man in a instead of s tier just because as the universe progressed and you know technology got better the the, uh, things became more flushed out i can appreciate and love the attention to detail of the other films more i think they're more complicated and advanced um, so for that reason, Iron Man is going to be A tier by no fault of um, of its own. So why not? Why not top? Why not S tier? It's not going to be S tier for me because, like I just mentioned, um, in the later films, there I think it's it's more impressive in the Avengers or crossover films when they're handling multiple characters. So just because like the other movies seem more impressive to you? Yes. Okay. That's fair. I'm leaving space for the other films. To totally be fair. Impressive. Totally fair. Where would you put it? Do you disagree? I would actually agree with A tier. Iron Man is a really solid movie. I think it is an, a perfect example. I think it's the best Iron Man movie that we have. I think it's the best example of Iron Man's superpowers. Uh, and we've talked about this before. My personal opinion is his superpower isn't his suit or his his tech. I think Iron Man's superpower is his adaptability and his ability to just uh, figure out exactly how to adapt and to deal with any situation thrown at him in in an in instant. Uh, and we see that through all the entire series. I mean, he was thrown – Iron Man 1, he's thrown into a cave uh, held by terrorists and need to you know break himself free and sur- to survive. And to do that, he shows his adaptability and then also uh, like – shows even his his the beginnings of his character arc through that uh which is which is really impressive so the movie's great i mean i think its biggest fault is like the villain uh villain which is jeff bridges in it is like fine like i it's fine it wasn't that compelling it was like a okay you can kind of see it from a mile away Mm -hmm. that's to me why i think it goes down to a uh because i think the villain could have been stronger um, or at least the te- like who, why who were fighting and why I thought the whole first half was phenomenal and then it starts to get like it starts to not fall apart but get a little weaker as it goes on but I think I mean come on it kicked off the MCU a tier I think is yeah I think that's where it goes I mean they were really taking a chance on this being the first film starring Robert Downey Jr. I mean, that was the that was the biggest chance was RDJ because you know he was not a uh, family friendly household name at the time, uh, so big big chance there, but it paid off. It it he's the perfect Iron Man. I think he's the only. I love his Iron Man. line delivery. He's like it's like the perfect mix of like fast and smart, but also funny. All right, so this one might be a little tricky. The next film also came out in 2008. Okay. The Incredible Hulk. Now, here's the thing. Michelle did not see this movie. She's never seen this movie. Is Incredible Hulk technically MCU? Yeah. That's weird. Uh, It's because they recasted Edward Norton. That is so awkward. Um, I just don't think he wanted to do it. I don't remember. There's articles about it, I'm sure. Uh, But he was recasted. It's Mark Ruffalo. Um, here's the thing. The Incredible Hulk's an Why interesting... Why did we watch it? Uh, we just wanted to keep watching the... It was because Mark Ruffalo wasn't in it. it uh, we should have. We should have. I actually don't think it it's in it the timeline order on the Disney Plus app. That's because Disney Plus doesn't own the streaming rights to it. Universal does. So that's why we didn't watch it most likely then. No, I mean, I made the decision not to. I, I was <laughs> like, well... Uh, like the Mark Ruffalo, Edward Norton characters, while they're similar, there's a lot of differences and it's sort of hard to connect in your head that they're the same character. Who do you think is the better Hulk, Ed Norton or Mark Ruffalo? I like, I like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk because Ed Norton is a little too, this feels weird, but like leading man, like that strong macho muscular hero sort of figure where Mark Ruffalo is more dad like, (laughs) and I know it's bizarre, but like Mark Ruffalo feels more like. Bruce Banner and I think um, and I say this all the time where I think 
Tobey Maguire was a better Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield was a better Spider-Man. Tom Holland is the best of both. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think like Mark Ruffalo is a better Bruce Banner, where Ed Norton was a better Hulk, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I would rather put money on who's the better like non-hero because I think and I think Mm. Marvel's biggest thing is the non-hero like out of costume, their non-hero version of their heroes are stronger than most other super like DC heroes for me at least. And that's why I think um, that's why I think they're so successful. So I think it's more important to be a better Bruce Banner than it is to be a better Hulk personally. But where do we put it on the tier list? Cause you, if you haven't seen it, that really comes down to me. It's not very good of a movie. I'll say that it's not F. great. Uh, we don't have F it goes down to D. D. So I'm going to throw it down there for now. Okay. I love what you said about Marvel casting. And we watched the casting behind the scenes oh, with Sarah Finn, so good. who is the casting director for Marvel. Um, and she, she said they always want to choose the best actor, like who really feels like they're the, the part mm-hmm. um, over a big who, name. Yeah, they, they would always refer to it as who is the most exciting human to play the role. Mm-hmm. The most exciting. And I like that because like, that's what led them to RDJ. As I, he's the most exciting version of that character. I like that a lot. We got we should watch that again at the end. All right. So the next movie came out. In, the next movie came out in 2010. All right. So we're now in Iron Man two. So Iron Man one comes out. Hulk mm. comes out, and then Iron Man two. We're not even with the That's other. That's weird. That's weird. Yet. Okay. Iron Man two is. Is that the one that introduces Warhammer? I don't know what Warhammer is. Uh, but I know. Oh, what. I'm sorry. So there's Whiplash War and there's Machine. War Machine. War Machine, Warhammer. Oh my goodness. So War Machine was introduced in Iron Man two, but Rhodey is introduced in Iron Man one, and then recast as Don Cheadle. Um, but yes, his character kind of comes to fruition. And they in fight Iron in the the Japanese garden bubble. Here's the thing. I think Iron Man two is eh. And I know. I would give it like a B. Whiplash. A so my issue is like Whiplash is very similar to the villain in the first movie, except now he has like sparkly whips, electricity whips. Yeah, it's like someone know. wronged by Tony's dad. It's like stuff that Tony had nothing to do with, and it just felt more like tech rivals and i like the army hammer stuff the not army hammer the uh justin hammer that's his name in the movie uh played by um uh i don't know but he's a great actor you know sam rockwell that's him thinking about I, I learned it just before I, I got to it uh sam rockwell uh plays justin hammer another like tech rival uh i found him more interesting than like the whiplash storyline but uh i mean i know he was the true villain but like I hope he comes back. He was arrested at the end of Iron Man 2. So he might come back later mm-hmm. in, the, in the franchise. We'll see. Um, I I would say Iron Man 2 goes to B or C. Yeah. So where would Let's like to throw it? Let's just put it in C. Let's throw it in C for now. Yeah. That feels harsh, but uh, you know, it, it's okay. It is pretty incredible how in all three Iron Mans, the, the story just kept going downhill for me. Iron Man mm. 1 is very solid. Iron Man 2 is like... Uh, there were some mistakes here, but like, it's fine. And then Iron Man 3 is like, we're in Tennessee. What the hell is going on? Okay. Where are we putting it? In C? Yep. Next movie. Let's go. All right. Next movie. Thor 2011. Here's my, here's, I'm just going to say. I know no F, F is, I know it's not on there, but it's F. Guys, Thor is a bad movie. So I'm, I don't Thor know. Thor is a good character. Uh, that I understand the direction why it went that way initially. Um, and obviously Taika, on, Taika Watiti only got to do in Thor Ragnarok. What he did was because of how Thor was initially set up. But, but, but we'll talk about that later. But Thor D, let's just not even talk about the first Thor movie anymore. I don't think it. Yeah, it's, it's not like great. He's in New Mexico and the Natalie Portman storyline just felt kind of weird. I don't know. It's a D for me. Poorly executed. This doesn't work because the most of the movie is Thor waiting for the action to occur. It's like 
they're hanging out in New Mexico and they're just we're just waiting for things to happen to the main characters. There's no agencies. There's I no agency that, for the protagonist. So it, yes. it just feels like there's there's no drive for us to be like, okay, what's going to happen next? It's like, I guess we'll just wait until the next interesting thing occurs. I will say Thor is the inverse of Iron Man in that as the movies, the number of, of movies increases, the better the films get with Thor. Well, that's interesting. Iron Man, I felt... Was a little with of the, the inverse with the Iron Man named films, but I think the character gets really strong. Oh yeah, strong. no, no, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The character is great. Ad alert! Ad alert! Oh yeah! Hit us with that fat ad. Growing up, I think we all had a favorite cereal. Cereal is one of the best parts of being a kid. But sometimes when you grow up, you realize, hmm. There's a lot of stuff in this cereal that I don't know how to pronounce. Okay, guys, it's 2021. We're all trying to eat better. And healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon cereal has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff, it's a wonderful replacement for a protein shake and a delicious way to get your protein before or after workouts. Magic Spoon has released a brand new variety pack, now featuring... Uh, peanut butter. Hey, That's hey. right. You heard me. Peanut butter. They released PB as a limited edition flavor in 2020 and it sold out three times. See, Ooh. peanut butter has gotten so much love that they decided to keep it permanent and add it to the best sellers variety pack, which also includes frosted, fruity, and cocoa. It has zero sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only net four grams of carbs in each serving, only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. So here's the thing. You can actually mix their flavors. You can mix the cocoa and the peanut butter, and it tastes exactly like a peanut butter cup. So if you guys want to try it out, go to magicspoon.com slash mission accomplished to grab a variety pack and try it out today. And be sure to use our promo code mission accomplished at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee. So if you guys don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. So remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash mission accomplished and use the code mission accomplished to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Okay, the next movie comes out in the same year. So it's Captain America, First Avenger, 2011. I love this movie. A or S for sure. I would not put it in S tier. I think okay, it I still think has issues. A. For me, it's A or B. A. Don't even pretend to hesitate, Garrett. It's it's your favorite hero. Cap is my favorite, all-time favorite hero, but the I'm just, does it deserve to be A? Yeah, yes. I'll, throw, I'll throw it in A. I'll tell you why it's, it's good. A. It's a good movie. Captain America gets an A because it was a period piece. Okay. Hello. That doesn't mean automatic A. But but the way, like, I think it's impressive how they tackled um, a period piece with a superhero in it. So there's a lot going on. They did it really well. It's a really great movie. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. And the character, it's a great character to work with. For and Chris Evans is awesome. So I would put it in A because it's I actually believe it's a hard character to deal with. I think it's an extremely difficult character to make an audience like because in the 40s Cap the hero was was designed to be propaganda was designed to get people interested in wartime efforts. And so what's interesting is now you know, modern day, we need to get people excited about Captain America. Okay, like, I now I know when you hear that name, everyone's like, oh, Captain America. Well, he's one of the most popular heroes. But, like, 10 years ago, who knew, like, not, like, comic readers knew who Cap was. But Cap wasn't, like, a household name for the people who, like, Fairweather comic book fans. Like, I, at least I don't think so. I, I Like, Captain America. Like, if I had a character named... Captain, uh, like Captain Britain, which is a character, um, you would be kind of roll your eyes and be like, "Well, that sounds lame." Well, that's kind of how Captain America sounds if you if he doesn't have the connotation of the MCU behind it. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, it yeah, sounds it sounds silly a little and, like tacky in a way. Yeah, and I think it is. And why the movie succeeds for me is it took that thing that sounds tacky and kind of lame and ridiculous, and it put heart into it. Cap understood he was only being used for propaganda. They went meta with it. Like they found the layers in it that they found the issue that they had. And then they used that to their advantage. Who directed the first one? Joe Johnson. Wow. 
So the director of the first Cap movie is the director of Beloved Jumanji. It came out in 1995. Uh, maybe that's why I did well. Move it on. Film. Gosh, I just want to keep talking about them, but we got to get through them. All right. Our next big movie. This is going to end phase one of the MCU. We uh-huh. have 2012 The Avengers, which was... Oh! Oh, baby at the time my favorite theater experience of all time because it was the i was sitting in the theater i was in college at the time <sighs> i sat down in the theater center seats and i'm like oh my god this is the moment all of my favorite heroes are finally on screen together the super collab and then there's the and that's never been done in, in a superhero franchise like this before mm-hmm. so for me avengers is either s or a okay the reason i think for its time it's totally s Mm-hmm. When it came out, it's like that's S tier for well, sure. Even watching it, we were impressed again. I think Avengers right. does a great job at uh, dealing with uh, pers- uh, what's the word? Uh, personalized action. The action for the heroes felt very personalized the and stunt exciting. Stunt coordination. And unique. Whoever whoever stunt coordinated that did a phenomenal job and just weaving through all those storylines obviously as the movies go on you know we go from avengers that has like six or you know, six heroes to Endgame that has 35 heroes like obviously one's more impressive in terms of story weaving all those characters together but at the time putting these big concept heroes together on screen and have them all go through very interesting arcs and set like lay down the the like just put you know, pave the path for these epic arcs later. I mean, the two lines that always come back to me that are said in, in the first Avengers movie is Cap and, and Iron Man are kind of uh, butting heads. And Iron Man, or, or Cap says, you know, big man in a suit of armor. You take that away, what are you? Uh, and, you know, Tony has his famous line, you know, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Uh, but, and that's why I always thought, Tony's arc is proving that his suit isn't his. Yeah. Here it isn't his. What makes him uh, a hero? Which we see paid off all the way in freaking Endgame. We see it pay off in the end of Avengers One when he pulls the nuke through the uh, portal. Uh, we see it in Iron Man Three. We see it in uh, Endgame. Like we see it over and over again. Him, the guy willing to make the sacrifice, which is something that Cap kept hounding him on and then we have cap the line that tony says back to cap which is you know everything special about you came from a bottle and so that's what cap's power isn't him having the super serum cap's power is just it's his famous line that is i can do this all day you know Mm -hmm. no matter how many times you hit him down he's gonna get right back up it's the heart in that person like it was the person who received the serum not the serum I love um, seeing you get excited when I you talk about it. I fucking love Cap. this shit. So, uh, for me, I would put Avengers A or S. Put it in S. Put it in S. Well, let's put it in S for now Give it because that. it was my favorite movie for such a long right. time. Right. And I want to emphasize that the reason, the only reason that we feel it shouldn't be S is because there is just yeah. some epic fucking shit coming out later. Yeah, but it's not like Iron Man where I'm like. For, for, for me, S tier should be perfect. And mm. Avengers to me is close to perfect. Okay, should we leave it an A then? I'm putting it an S right now. It might get bumped down. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned. Okay, next movie. All right, guys. Now we're well, now we're uh, getting into phase two of the Ooh. MCU. So phase two kicks off in 2013 uh-huh. with Iron Man three. First thoughts on Iron Man three? Go. See. My first thoughts on Iron Man three are <clears throat> again Robert Downey Jr. kicks ass. Like it, he's. Such a great actor. Wonderful. The downfall of the film for me is the, I like, we're suddenly in Tennessee. That that whole storyline of, like, Tony's disappeared and decides to set up shop in a garage in Tennessee with some kid rather than getting on a private jet and going back to his lab in California. Like, things are just, like, didn't make well, he was to me. He, he was working on it. He was trying to get back. That was the whole point. Was he was trying to fix his suit? His suit was broken. He was yeah, trying to fix his suit. Yeah, but I would rather take You're just the saying, pieces. And yeah, yeah. I, I would call my secretary. He tried. That that was what he was trying to do. I, I think what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but when you arrive at the house, literally, I'm gonna yeah, walk you through. That's what he tried to you do. You arrive at the house. That's what he tried to do. You call someone. Say send a private jet. Okay. 
And sure. he's like, I can't call them because my suit doesn't work. I think, no, no. I think the bigger problem is that any of that happened to begin with. Like, yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, him calling it, like, sure, the story has holes. I just think a different story, maybe. Like, doing the Mandarin fake out, like, it was funny and it was funny for a joke, but it wasn't, like, impactful as a villain or anything. So I I agree with you with your set assessment. I, I, I would put I it in C. I think it's just a lot of random things happen. And there are a lot of holes. I think the uh, them becoming like magma people. I don't even know. Oh, what I it forgot was. about it was that. Just ridiculous. Okay, yeah. the The part of the movie that didn't make any sense to me is at the end, in the final climactic scene. Spoiler: uh, Gwyneth Paltrow falls off a scaffolding into a literal explosion of fire. Mm-hmm. And Tony, I thought, it, you know, watching the film. Tony doesn't know yet that she's a magma person and will survive that. Tony, I wanted to see go through a moment of like, oh my God, I've lost the one I've loved. That seemed like a mm-hmm. perfect setup for that moment for me. And it didn't happen. And he goes right back into the fight. Like, I just felt like that was a mis- missed opportunity or like misdirection. I don't know what was going on or like why people thought that wouldn't need a moment. Like if if I watched Garrett fall off a scaffolding into a fire explosion, I would definitely have a moment. And that would affect mm-hmm. me for the rest of the fight. Like, I wouldn't... I guess was... the idea is that the, the 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 thought was, well, she's not really dead, so we don't need to waste screen time on it. But then the audience doesn't know that. Yes. So they're like, well, he should still feel something through it. And there was some of that. But I, I, I agree with you that it was not nearly to the extent... Like, Let's make if you're gonna do something like that. If you're gonna make have a Gwyneth Paltrow beat, fall off a scaffolding, make a beat out of it, you know. Yes. Make it a make it a moment. Right. Uh, totally agree. I'm throwing it in C. So yeah. Iron Man two C. and three are like sharing C tier together. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, sorry, Shane Black. I love everything else you've made. Next movie on the list. Are you ready for some Thor Dark World? Ooh. I do not like <laughs> Thor Dark World. That's strike two for Thor for me. C or B? B. You want to put, you think Thor Dark World goes to B? Okay, put it in C. What did you like about it? I'm considering B. I like Loki. Like Lo- Loki. Loki's a lot. great. Loki's great. I just am so like, everything just feels bland. And uh, the ether was just very, it was too fantasy to the point where they were just making hmm. up rules on the fly. I think. Ether deserved a little more explanation as well. I think they just need to, if they're going to set up rules, they have to follow rules and they set rules and then change and added new rules as the movie went on. And they acted as if they were like twists and turns for the movie, but twists and turns aren't fun if you have no breadcrumbs to be able to actually figure mm-hmm. it out. So when you're just throwing new information about how this fantasy sci-fi tech or yeah. whatever works, yeah. you're just like, all right, I guess I could not have seen that coming. And what a, like everything just feels random at the end, just for the sake of climactic moment, yeah. which then creates other holes later on in the story. So I, I think that I'm Thor, going is, Thor is a really difficult character to tackle because all of the other characters, uh, not all of them, but a majority of the MCU are humans who stumble into superpowerdom. Thor, on the other hand, is entirely high fantasy and matching those two together, which later on in the MCU happens really well, I think is difficult to start. Well, and I think, I don't know how anyone could have tackled I think Thor, Thor one and two. I th- Thor, in Thor one or two, he's talking to Jane, Natalie Portman, and he says, see, you guys have science in your world. And in our world, we think science and magic are the same thing, like. Mm-hmm. They're not different ideas. They're the same thing. We just call them different names. I did like I, that I, moment. I really like that. I think that's a good way to blend that it That was together. from Thor 1. A moment we enjoyed in Thor 1. Uh, still D tier. Sorry. Next movie on the list is one of my favorite mm-hmm. MCU films. So good. So good. It's this is when I think the MCU graduated to a new level. It was already good. And now it is a new level of good. This is 2014 Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh! This is the oh, first installment directed by the Russo brothers, who then went on to direct Civil War, the Russo Infinity brothers. War, uh, and Endgame. Uh, if you don't know, the Russo brothers directed a ton of episodes of 
Arrested Development and Community. So they and are... They went on to do Captain America Winter Soldier. Crazy. So they are very well versed in uh, taking a, a large cast of varying dis, uh, uh, varying personalities and then weaving them all together and making them all work. And they're also just good at comedy storytelling uh, with that many characters. And so that was something really important the MCU needed to not make everything feel just bland and stilted, where I think Thor sort of fell into a little bit. Winter Soldier, for me, is amazing. And as we talked about earlier in the last podcast, uh, it is essentially a like homage to 70 political thrillers. Uh, they even took Robert Redford and made him the villain in the movie, who you know was the star of Three Days of the Condor and all the President's Men back in the 70s and 74 and 75. Uh, so, like... Pretty amazing work of art, I think. This movie it had good action. It felt, uh, it was, it was, it was gritty. The the characters were awesome. It was entertaining. There were so many fun twists, and the villain was just done. Re- like even though you don't see the this big baddie develop the whole time, and it didn't matter. Like they just did such a good job at at, at that twist and the whole Hydra, you know, storyline. I thought was really well done. And also, so it was like good. really the Hydra twist was crazy. It's just a really nuanced way to to handle a hero that is a puppet for the government. And you know, in the comics, Cap kind of transitions to the mm-hmm. Black Star, and that's a, a really interesting. I I didn't know if they were going to go that direction with this with the movies, and I'm really glad they did because I think it's. Far more deep and heavy than anything else I've seen out of a superhero movie so far. I just love the Russo brothers and all of the movies they've done in the MCU. Their attention to detail and mm-hmm. yeah, respect for each character. And like they tell a really impactful story that keeps you engaged and feels accurate to the comics or, or to the characters, I should say. Um, it's, they're just such master storytellers. They and really are. I, and I think they did a good job with uh, Black Widow's storyline with uh, The Steve red Rogers. herring. Because on the poster, mm-hmm. you assume, oh, they they might have potentially some chemistry or a love storyline. They hint with them together a lot. And what's really cool is that Black Widow wasn't looking for a love interest in the movie. She was just looking for a friend that she could trust. Family, you know? Uh, grow, we explore her backstory a little bit. I thought that was just a really smart choice. Um, really cool. So yeah, Something I, I wasn't yeah. expecting out of the movie was to have so much Black Widow, which I loved. And come on, like the song that is playing in the apartment when Nick Fury crashes at Steve's place after he's, you know, pronounced dead uh, is the same song that plays at the end of Endgame when he finally gets his last dance with Peggy. There's so many like oh, through lines that are connected heart. because the Russo brothers, you know, so that was great. Um, I'm putting it S tier. There's yeah. no negotiation there. I think you yep. would agree. Hard agree. Uh, next movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, 2014. Mm-hmm. James Gunn. This is a this is a fan favorite. Everyone loves the first Guardians movie. I think yeah, it's, it's widely loved. Really fun. I thought it, I thought it was hilarious. A great casting. Um, really, you know, another really big thing to take on. It's basically like. It's weird. There's like a tree character and a uh, a raccoon character. It's a lot to manage, um, and I think it was it was pretty well done. I would give this B. Oh, I put Guardians A. 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 Okay, go I A. Because think about it. Think about it. It's not even that they had to deal with Groot and Rocket. For me, it's I mean, it's that, but even more so. No one knew what the, who the Guardians were. The Guardians weren't even popular in comics. They were so far down on the list of, of popularity. And Disney chose to pump them into the MCU because they own the merchandise rights to them. So it would be easier to, to make more money off of the Guardians. Well, is very cute. So. But, they tr- but he wasn't at first. He was just a tree. But it, then was, they made him They cute. made him into Baby Groot, which is a marketing uh stroke of genius the guardians is so difficult because it's like drax mantis all these characters i mean mantis is guardians too but all these weird alien characters no one's ever heard of why would anyone want to watch this and james gunn found a way to make a tree and a cybernetic rocket or raccoon interesting and funny and there's a lot of heart in it 
and there was character and there was story and there was uh it was it was juicy it was a, and it's i a really like chris pratt as uh it's great yeah star lord yeah it's great uh, they're, they're all cast so well um th- this was an example of someone who was given a really weird project and just ran with it didn't play it safe just like really went hard and leaned into their vision and it I think it was it's great. So I'm I'm going to put it at A for right now. Yeah. This is fun. I'm having fun. Next in phase 2 we have uh Avengers Age of Ultron 2015. So now we have yeah. our second uh Avengers movie. Okay, I'll say this. I hadn't watched Ultron because everyone said originally. Originally because I just heard a lot of negative things about it like it's that it was disappointing or not as good as the first Avengers. I was really pleasantly surprised with the movie overall Mm -hmm. because um, I didn't know what Ultron was. And when I realized like, oh, they're basically fighting the internet. Well, an AI using the internet as a way of... I thought uh, it was so smart. I thought conceptually Ultron as a character is Mm. really smart and really cool. It's like uh, the movie Her. Imagine the movie Her. And exactly. Those, those AIs that are created. And then like imagine if it wanted to wipe out humanity. And you're like, oh, fuck. Well, that's why this is a problem. Right. And I, I just thought it was so smart. And then, you know, obviously when they kill the first version of him, he's like, I've already, I have life elsewhere. That was a very like Her moment for me. Um, Oh, my God. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't think, I still think I like. Um, Battle of New York more the first Avengers Avengers 2 is cool but there's a lot of problems with it I think there's a lot of messiness to it everything you said I agree with I think they had a lot to work with my issue is is that the 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 combat the fighting wasn't as interesting to me as it was in the first movie I mean it's it's really it's a really difficult act to follow for sure but 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 I think uh, the biggest downfall is how messy the like Ultron trying to make a body and it ends up becoming vision and it needs to be made of vibranium and like all sure. it was there was a lot of messiness in just to motivate like the to motivate vision being born was so messy and like it just felt gr- like all right sure I guess this is gonna have to make sense mm-hmm. but if Avengers 2 wasn't as messy as it was and didn't set the things up it had to set up Endgame. True. Would not, I felt like the constraint was like you no, have no, to wait, shove wait. in a ton of plot points. Right. You know? It was if they didn't if, if if Joss Whedon didn't do what he had to do to get all that like messiness in, then Endgame, well, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame would not be as successful. Yes. Because those movies needed that stuff to happen in that movie for the rest of the MCU to work out so successfully. So I think Age of Ultron sort of had to like take one for the team in terms of story cleanliness just to get those storylines started. I still think it's really impressive. I would say B. I'm B or C, bro. I'm Let's B or give C. it a B. I give no Bs right now. I just don't think it's that good. I think it's a C. You, okay, I'll go B for you. Okay. It's B for you. Theory. Next right. movie. One more movie of the. Are we going too fast through all this? We're going too slow okay. because we're we're. Are people enjoying this? I hope. I don't so. care if you're enjoying this. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Michelle's enjoying this. If you're here, that means you must. Um, well, actually, we're we're a little bit halfway through. I would say, guys, let us know in the comments if you agree with our assessment so far. I know we're blazing through this. By the way, we've this also is, had a lot of time to think about it. This is our ranking. Might not be your ranking. I don't care if you disagree and like as in like your ranking is right for you. Like that's what you find. Mm-hmm. Movies are subjective, so come on. Have fun. Have fun. This is how we feel. Um <laughs> the the last movie of phase two is Ant Man, twenty fifteen. Okay, Ant Man. Uh... Ant Man's interesting because it was originally an Edgar Wright project. He got kicked off the project, replaced with Peyton Reed. Um, and you can still feel a lot of the Edgar Wright in the script, even though he wasn't there at the end because they had to leave his name, you know, because he still wrote the first draft. So some of that Edgar Wright still bled through to the final product, but it wasn't an Edgar Wright film. So, 
Um, Ant-Man's tough. I think they have a great char- I think Ant-Man's a way better character than it gets credit for. I agree. I think Paul I think Rudd, Paul is, Rudd perfect. is amazing. So good. Such such a great comedic relief to be added into the MCU. Um, and honestly, I think Paul Rudd's exp- like Paul Rudd created the show Party Down, one of my favorite shows, and I think he's just has such a good eye for comedy storytelling and he has a lot of wonderful credit. comedic timing. But not only timing, he he has such truth to him mm-hmm. in his comedy. It doesn't feel like I'm saying a joke at the right time. Mm-hmm. Ha ha ha. Like it doesn't feel like it feels a natural. sitcom. It feels natural. In that it's very way. Very authentic. So where do we put Ant Man? Is it B or C? Because the movie's not that great, to be honest. Yellow jacket as a villain is whatever. Uh it's fine. It's another tech rival yeah, storyline. And it's I'm just another sick of billionaire those. versus billionaire. I'm just, and I know that makes sense. Like, I know here's the problem Marvel movies have. Avengers 1, the bar of danger is set to the Jatari are attacking Earth. Aliens are attacking. And now to have to go back to like the smaller things like, ooh, a tech billionaire rivalry. I know why they have to do it because if it was too big, all the Avengers would have to be in that movie because it's like, why don't you call Iron Man? Why don't you call this? So it's just, this is like weird balancing act. However, I don't need another tech billionaire rivalry. We've had like, we've seen all three Iron Mans. We've seen it done three, four times. So we're good on that. I think the reason that Ant-Man would go potentially, I, I think it could be or C, but I think the, the part that I think was a missed opportunity with the movie is that I don't think, I feel like Wasp wasn't developed as much as I wanted her to be. I wanted to spend more time with Wasp too. And I know the sequel is Ant-Man and the Wasp. But even then, I still feel like when you ask, how much do you know about Wasp versus Black Widow? I would say I know more about Black Widow, even though Wasp. But Black Widow... To this point, has been in three movies. That's true. That's true. But you know what I mean? Like, I care more about because you've like, seen her for three I movies. Guess that's true. I guess that's true. You saw. I don't know. I just three movies. I wanted, of I wanted more Wasp, or maybe more movies. At this point, I mean, at this point in the story, we've seen her in Iron Man two, Iron Man. Is she in Iron Man three? Technically, no. no. I don't remember. She's in Iron Man two. <laughs> we just watched this. She's in. Uh, Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, she's in Winter Soldier, four movies. So, of course, you care about Black Widow more than somebody that you literally just met. And but do you know what I mean when I feel like the story was very focused on Ant-Man and Pym? Because that's what the movie's called, Ant-Man. I know. Hank Pym is, was a more important... Fine, I'm just saying what I wanted. <laughs> that's, fu- that's fine. But Hank Pym is a more important character... To the, the origin film, yeah. of Ant-Man. In the comics, Hank Pym is Ant-Man. That's who we yeah. follow for the most part. And we didn't know when we were going to get this. When we got right, the Ant-Man right, right, movies, right, we didn't know right. if we were going to follow Hank Pym or or Scott Lang. And Hank Pym is an important part of Marvel history. So I understand why why we spent more time developing him than uh, than Wasp. Uh, to, to be fair, though, the Wasp in the comics has some of my favorite storylines. So... I do wish we got more of those true storylines from the comics with the Wasp because there's some really heavy shit that goes on there, especially with Ant-Man and like his other personality and the giant man. All that stuff is really interesting. I don't know if they're covering that. We'll see. Anyway, Ant-Man, I, I, I'm saying C, but do you feel like it should be B? No, you you don't like it the, that much, do you? I think Ant-Man and the Wasp is better. Well, we're not ta- we're talking about I know. Ant-Man. So I guess C. We can put them both in C. Wasp, Ant-Man and Wasp, I think, is B for me. Oh, you like that better? Yes. Oh, Ant-Man, C. All right, that concludes Phase 2. Guys, we're going to have to rapid-fire Phase 3. Phase 3 has the most movies than any phase. Double the amount of movies that Phase 2 has. All right? So Phase 3 kicks off with Captain America Civil War. This is 2016. One of my favorite movies again. Just S-tier the F out of it. Russo Brothers. S-tier... Look, you had to set up Black Panther. You you have to do so and Spider-Man. And Spidey. You have to do so much. And the movie was shot and then they got the rights to Spider-Man. And then they added Spider-Man into the movie. Stop. So, as they were that. shooting. So Ooh, that's, drama. 
and they did it well. They did it well. Also, come on, the Russos hid the Bluth stair car in the background of the airport Yeah, so scene. if you've seen Arrested Development, you know, the stair car, it's literally in the airport fight scene. So I'm going to put it in S tier. I don't know how Disney approved that. Like, they literally had to pay someone to get no, that. No, the logo's not on it. They just, it was just an homage to it, yeah. Uh... There's no, there's no approval process. They just, <laughs> they just put a stair car with a blue stripe in the back. That's all they had to do. <sighs> Dang. Okay. Anyway, well, so Civil wonderful. Civil War goes S tier. Uh, the storyline between Cap and Iron Man with their opposing ideologies is fantastic. The ending, the final fight in silhouette of Cap and Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Ah! Yeah, and I loved that the villain is themselves, the true villain. Yeah, it, Zemo, like the, all the fights are literally against each other. Yeah, There's no like yeah. big like aliens are coming over or whatever. Well, there's like, Zemo, but Zemo's plan... But Zemo doesn't do anything. Right, his plan was to get them to kill each other. Yes. Yeah. Which, it's uh, okay, so to be smart. fair, which is another kind of trope the event that Marvel does a lot is have the villain try to get the Avengers to kill each other. Like Loki does that twice with Hulk or everyone tries to do that with Hulk. So that's a little annoying, but I thought... But Civil I love that well. like there was like a red herring of Zemo is going to like do some like gather a bunch of aliens or you know like i i thought that it was gonna be he has some big master plan to extinguish them and it, i it thought did. it was and really it was them kill each other yeah, yeah i think that's smart yeah. i think that's cool great yeah i i agree it's next it s tier uh next is dr strange 2016 which is a movie you had not seen you thought you had seen it then you watched it and thought maybe i never saw it and i just saw a trailer for it now you've seen it <laughs> Now you have a much greater appreciation for his character. Yeah, yeah. I have so much more appreciation for Doctor Strange as a character. Also, Benedict Cumberbatch is great. Remember when you saw him B. crash for the first time and you saw him like his car crash? Oh, my God. That, I, fucked up. The whole hand situation. Yeah, you would only know that if you watched the movie because he doesn't shake or anything in the other films. He does in Infinity War and Endgame when, oh, he, when he holds up the one. When he shows Iron Man that there's this is the one timeline. He holds his one finger up and it's shaking because he still hasn't fully recovered. Um, Doctor Strange is good for a lot of reasons, and it's very odd and and weird for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. I'd like it more. I like it more the second and third time that I've seen it, to be honest. Yeah. So the final yeah. fight slash encounter with the weird like Dormammu. that being was really strange because it was like the threat was like <laughs> you don't. Like, you don't want to enter Earth because I'm just going to be in a time loop annoying you for forever. It it felt weird. Well, the idea was that Doctor Strange was going to stuck stick him in a time loop for all of eternity. So Dormammu could either, A, live in this 12-second time loop forever, literally infinity, or back off Earth and continue destroying other planets. Yeah, I guess that was smart. I think if they, I thought it was, it's one of those ideas that's cool in theory and then execution is like, all right, so he fought him by just dying a million times in a row and then Dormammu eventually got bored. I think it's hilarious in like the writer's room, but like, does it really play well on screen? On the other hand, it's the time stone. So like, you got to pull off some cool, like winning move with the time stone. I I like his cape. I thought that was cool. Uh, The cloak of levitation. The Cloak of Levitation. Yeah. yeah. Very D&D. Doctor Strange has a lot of D&D stuff hidden in it, and I like it a lot. So I'm going to... Oh. Where are we putting it? What are we rating it? I'm going... Uh, well, see, I'm afraid to put it in B, because that, that puts it with Avengers, but that's where I'm going to put it. No, it's not as good as Avengers, though. Ultron? Oh, oh, sorry. That's Ultron at B. Oh, yeah. Let's put it Let's put it B. Yeah. B. B, 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 B. Let's not get B. ahead of ourselves. Please. And obviously we're giving all these critiques like also I recognize if I was asked to helm a Marvel film. Oh, fuck that. Oh, I mean, my on. God. The level of pressure, the detail, all right. the balance. Speed round. Guardians 2. C. I don't like Guardians 2. Guardians Unpopular 2. Unpopular opinion. Storyline of like, uh, my dad's a god, but he's evil. I don't know. It just felt so. And I know it's high fantasy, but it felt a little out of touch in a way out of touch just like touch? so unbelievable so unbelievable wait why is it out of touch what do you mean by out of touch 
out of touch with i'm in unbelievable i guess okay so out of touch with the reality oh, oh, oh. um I, I don't like guardians 2 because similar to my critique on thor 1 it's a lot of the characters just hanging out on ego on the planet and just waiting for things to happen to them mm. not much was really going on peter quill was completely wasted the other like rocket had great development yondu had great development even groot had great development Gamora, Nebula's relationship, amazing. Even Drax and Mantis, That's introduction true. of Mantis. But, 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 Peter Quill, Star-Lord, s- s- sitting on a planet the entire movie and didn't do anything. He did nothing the whole movie. And sure, he overcame it at the end and killed his dad. But, like, that's not a... It... Boo. Okay, C-tier. Next movie. Next movie. Spider-Man Homecoming 2017. A. Put it in A. I don't put it in A. Are you kidding? Yeah, I don't think it's an A. I think it's a B. I guess we're going to fight. I think uh, I think Michael Keaton's awesome, but the final fight is so lame. So you don't remember it. I remember it. What is it? They're surrounded by all the fire. It, it, it was a, it took place on a plane, and then it crashed, and then that's yes. the fire you're referring to? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Spider-Man is A for me. I'm biased. I love Spider-Man. Me too. Second favorite character. I just think Tom Holland is so good. But it is a good movie. I think it's a yes. good... I think it's a solid movie. Yes. I think it's a solid movie. I also have a lot of appreciation for it because we know his stunt double, Holland Diaz. That's bias. I don't care. It's so, an A for me. I think it's a B. I think it's a great movie. I think it's a B. I think Zendaya is great. I think Tom Holland is great. I think it's a... the Ned All right. character. All right, I'll, I'll give it an A. I'll give Dude, it an A for you. Give it an A because an a when now. Ned gets found in the library, he says, "I'm watching porn," okay, <laughs> and that, his that delivery was, was so perfect. That was a pretty good line. All right, fair enough. Give it an A. Like, for Ned. A for Ned. A for Ned. And Tom Holland. All right, we got to keep going. Thor Ragnarok. 2017. A. We all like Thor Ragnarok. Taika Waititi is so good. Actually, maybe B. No, it's going A, a for okay, me. Fine. I think it's super solid. I think there are problems, obviously, I but told it's a you, super solid inverse movie. Inverse of Iron it's Man. really funny. Thor goes like this. Mm-hmm. Iron Man. Eh. Taika Waititi. Real sorry, I know this is long. I don't care. Real quick, Taika is the first person to really understand how to use Thor to his full potential. He saw, oh, Chris Hemsworth is fucking hilarious. Why don't we use this? Why isn't this? Why is Chris's humor not being utilized with this character? The second they tapped into it, it is amazing. Also, come on. Loki in that movie. Tom Hiddleston crushed it. Thor Ragnarok. Stroke of Genius. Everyone loves it. Black Panther. Next. A. S. One of those. I don't think it's an S. I think it will. It's. I think if it Amazing. wasn't, I think it almost, it's an A for me, but if it, but only hmm, two, two parts of the movie I don't like. I don't like the final fight. I thought the final fight's terrible. Black Panther versus Killmonger. It was completely CGI. It's the train battle. That's it was true. nothing memorable. Not a single memorable thing about it. It's horrible. They're not using their powers in interesting ways. They're just clones of themselves. It's so I think everything Everything else, else is, is stellar. Is, is, is stellar. Ryan Coogler, I mean, come on. Fruitvale Station is one of our favorite movies. Ryan Coogler destroyed this movie. He's, he destroyed this also, movie. It's so like, good. It's I just so good. love that. I love, I love how you can feel Ryan Coogler's direction in every aspect of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like... Even down to the soundtrack. Tell me one other Avengers movie that has a memorable soundtrack. Uh, Guardians. Okay, fine. But the majority of the Guardians soundtrack is uh, previously made content. Black Panther is almost entirely all original Kendrick Lamar songs. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't know. Black Panther is S for me. I can't put it in S. I can put it in A. I can't put it we'll in S. We'll put it between A and S. I know it's hard because... And I think the whole part about him, like, fake dying and then, like, being nursed back to health... That's true. That was just... a little... I... 
there's some story issues for me, but generally it's really fun. It's really exciting. I thought they did an, like you could not have set up Wakanda better. Right. And I would argue that a lot of like the issue potentially we find in some of the films is in the, the script when there are problems versus other arenas. I mean, I, but at the same time, like I can't, I literally cannot imagine since you're like, decades of comic books consolidating that into one film that's so hard so props to anyone who has ever written any of these things i mean no idea how you did it next film the next movie we're ranking is avengers infinity war girl one way ticket to the s tier so one way ticket to the s tier rooster brothers back in the driver's seat let's go the um, Avengers Affinity War, I think, is one of my all-time favorite movies. I've seen it six times now. Thanos is the main character of this movie. He's our protagonist in a way. And it is... You've seen it. So just... I won't say more. What something I really enjoyed rewatching it with you at home is Garrett knows like all the behind the scenes. So every five minutes he would pause and be like, do you see this thing in the back corner? That's from this movie. And like this yeah, allusion I'm to the comics. very annoying when we're watching Marvel movies because I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing was said in this movie, which is a reference to that movie. And I I'm love Charlie it because I learned a lot. This is happening. But there is a limit. I had to I had to tell you to calm down during Endgame because the Endgame is already a three hour movie. And yeah. you were getting a little crazy. I was pausing it a lot. There's a lot of Easter eggs, though. Yes. A lot of Easter eggs. All right. Uh, I could gush about Infinity War for a whole 50 minutes, but we're, we're yet, we got to move S-tier. on. S-tier. Yes. Endgame. Next. S-tier. We're not at Endgame. That's not the next movie that came out. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the next movie that comes out. B. It's C for me. Okay. B slash C. It's another one of those. Uh, here's why it's C. The whole thing about getting the mom back or getting uh, that getting, was strange. Getting the original it's like wasp how back. has she survived there for it's, sixty? Years. The whole plot was really dumb. The whole plot, Ghost, really dumb. It was all dumb. I think that it just none of it's up memorable. A, a none of it's memorable. With... I've seen this movie twice, and now this is the third time. And I, every time I think back to the movie, I cannot remember that Ghost exists in the movie. She's the villain. And I can't remember she exists. That to me is a C tier film. There are some of the funniest scenes in that movie out of any MCU movie. Paul Rudd running around a middle school or a elementary school as a half sized human. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. It has some of the best comedy, but it is so unmemorable. So to me, that's a C. Endgame. Endgame. We're not at Endgame yet. You're skipping ahead again. The next movie to come out is Captain Marvel. I think Captain Marvel is mostly bad. <laughs> and it's not even hating on Brie Larson. I like Brie Larson. She's an amazing actress. I think the movie, and we watched a video essay on like what would have been a better version of Captain Marvel story-wise. Totally agree with it. Do you remember it? I do. The fatal flaw of Captain Marvel is that she's a character with amnesia who doesn't remember who she is. Therefore yeah. no character development can occur until the end of the movie when she gets her flashbacks. So we're watching an entire movie without character development, without being able to fall in love with the hero we're watching, which is like a wasted two hours. Like we just are watching this person and we're like, I don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You have no personality. And that's not Bree's fault. That's the story's fault. I think, Brie Larson did an amazing job. She did. I think she did what she could with it, to be honest. Her yeah. banter with Nick Fury was awesome. I thought there. I thought. I like Goose the cat. Ben Mendelsohn as the as the as one of the scrolls was was so good. Ben Mendelsohn is fantastic. Um, so there were like nuggets of great stuff in there. It's a it's a you know C what I think me. it really is is it's it's again a difficult thing to do something so high fantasy in a universe that's somewhat grounded in humanity i don't think so anymore i mean we have explored the cosmic side of the mcu for so many movies now after doctor strange anything goes i'll say this i'm really excited about captain marvel 2 and to see how she continues to develop i just the MCU. wish she was developed and then i'd be less mad that she's op like thor's op but he was developed he, they developed him. They did not develop Captain Marvel. Yes, but think about how many movies that took to develop Thor. 
The first one wasn't that great. But the you, second yeah, one also but wasn't by the end great. of Thor one, you knew who Thor was. You knew who Thor was for the most part. They did not develop Carol Danvers. They just didn't develop her until the end of the movie. And by the time you get to the end, the movie's over and you're, you've only been sitting with her character for like 15 minutes. And you're like, okay. And that whole thing about her, like, like her, Oh, you let your emotions take control. We never see that happen in the movie. The movie keeps telling us how Carol used to act, but we never see it. So we're just being told this is how the character is. I do wish we had seen more of her. We don't get to see it. We don't get to, we don't get to see her in her prime. So it was just kind of weird. It was a weird way to tell that story. I know why they were trying to set up the scroll and the, they're trying to set up secret invasion, the comic book arc, but which is going to be freaking awesome. So I think it's another one of those movies. It's like, take one for the team. Like, let's use this movie to set up secret invasion and we'll have to sacrifice some character development so that later movies can be even better. So I'm going to put Captain Marvel as a C. I want it as a B. It's really bad. So you think it's better than you think it's on par with Doctor Strange and Ultron? I do. Really? I I think there were just a lot of like also really wonderful things about the movie in general. It's the first female led Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. It's dealing with a lot of. But that doesn't make it good. Like it shouldn't it shouldn't be voted up just because it's the only one. It should just mean there should be more of them. That, I'm bummed because they, for me, they let down the first female-led superhero movie. They didn't give her character development. They gave Black Widow so much character development. Black Widow's such a good character. She sh- obviously should have had a movie in Phase 1. That's just crazy to me. I want to put Captain Marvel in B. Okay. You got it. It's now in B. It is now sitting with... Avengers Age of Ultron and Doctor Strange. That feels that feels pretty yeah. appropriate. You know what? You know, I agree. It's I don't I don't actually think it's C tier because it wasn't it didn't it wasn't like horrible. It was it had some it did have some really good moments. And I will say it's memorable. It's pretty memorable. B feels right. B feels right. All right. Two more movies. All right, and then we're wrapping this podcast up. Endgame. We're finally at Endgame. Let's go, Endgame. Where are you putting it? Is it S or A? G, God tier. That's That would yeah. be worse. So S or A. God tier. That's that's what S is. It's above S. No, so S or A. You, you want S. Yeah. I'm the, I think Endgame is great. I'm a little iffy because, all right, I'll put it in. Oh, yeah, it's up there. It's up there. It's up there. It's S. I I love Endgame. It's the Russo brothers. It's phenomenal. I know. The tying I, of all thirty something characters together. I was just trying to think. Do I like Enjoyable, it as much as funny? You Infinity feel like War. you learn and spend enough time with the characters, even though each person's on screen for apparently only five minutes apiece. It's crazy. That movie could have been an insane clusterfuck. And it is in a way, in a good way. So I I think just like time yeah, heist but, being successfully pulled off is awesome. Yes! And I think. The perfect conclusion to Cap and Tony's storylines. The only thing I think it did a disservice to is Black Widow. I think Black Widow should have had a bigger... I know she sacrificed herself for her family, which is her arc. But I wish it wasn't in a vacuum. The only person who knows about this sacrifice is is Clint, Hawkeye, and... So you wish it had been like on the battlefield. We didn't even get her big last, f- like her her part in Infinity War was so trimmed down. Her one fight in Endgame is her fighting Hawkeye. I wanted to see Black Widow like make a really important move against Thanos, because she didn't get to uh... fight Thanos in Infinity War. There's one shot of her running up to Thanos at the end and then like off camera she gets hit and then she like lies on the ground and then rocks pile on her. We don't actually get to see her fight Thanos. That's lame. She's She was set up in Iron Man 1. It's lame not to get to see her take a shot on Thanos. Imagine a like 15 second clip of her and Thanos going like her spinning around him and like using like 
give us that just a little hint of it. Otherwise, like, come on, she died in on Voromir by herself, essentially sacrificed herself. And then That's the true. funerals for Tony make sense, but no mention of Black Widow. She didn't even get a funeral. Oh, OK. Movie. She didn't get a funeral, but they did say like like at, at Tony's funeral. Um, at Tony's t- at Tony's funeral, Hawkeye they mentioned Black Widow. And Wanda are like chatting about her. But yeah, you're right. It should have been a joint funeral. That's that's a, weird. I haven't thought up, about that until now. That's pretty weird. So I made a mistake. She, yeah, sorry, not set up in Iron Man one. She's in Iron Man two. But like, come on, she's set up in Phase one, and she's in two Phase one and movies. And she doesn't have a funeral. And they just kill her off. And like, yeah. So it is. That's it a is also strange to me. They didn't do a Black Widow f- film earlier. Yeah. But they were waiting for Wonder Woman. They're they were waiting for DC to to see if to make the risk. But first. they weren't. Because they greenlit Captain Marvel before Wonder Woman came out. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But I think, I guess Marvel just felt at this point. Yeah, I guess a solo Black Widow movie didn't fit with the timeline earlier. However, like Black, the Black Widow solo movie is supposed to be with between Civil War, Winter Soldier and Civil War. So like, that's a bullshit excuse. Yeah, they should have done it earlier. That's That's all there is to it. Yeah. Um, well, they didn't. And then last but not least, Far From Home. Far From Home. Uh, we've seen this movie and it's pretty good. Pretty funny. I love Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor and I think his character is so funny and this so interesting. for me is between a B and an A. Uh, I would put it at B. I don't okay. think it's strong enough as an A because I don't think of it like a, it doesn't feel like a 90% to me. It feels it feels like an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, like an 80, 85. Really? So that, to me, that's like B tier. Okay. Um, mainly just because it's like, why are we in Rome fighting? School field trip, let's go! We're in Rome fighting yeah! a CGI man, like a, like a, a green screen I special effects it. man. I loved it. I just, it felt a little random, but I thought they did pretty good job constructing the scenes it was one of those things where you see like "Ooh, i'm a water elemental monster in rome and it's like it just felt like goofy old school spider-man in a bad way i mean speaking of old school spider-man sam raimi who you know directed the first three spider-man movies with tommy wire you know what he's doing for marvel now right what he's directing doctor strange 2 the multiverse of madness can't Very wait. Tobey Maguire just signed this week. Holy cow. So that, I believe. Where are we putting in this movie? B or C? B. B. Not C. Sorry, B. It's going to B. That's it. That's uh, our tier list. It looks pretty right. solid. Yeah. That was pretty great. And you know what's crazy is like all of these movies are like. Movies. Like, They're all movies. So impressive. The, the, impressive. the entire thing is astoundingly impressive. And the fact that we have the privilege of getting mm-hmm. to sit in an audience. So lucky. And watch years of work condense down into two hours and then leave the theater and still like give critiques to it is ridiculous. Kevin Feige is the most successful movie producer of all time. He and the Rooster Brothers. It's their world and we're just living in it. Wow. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Watching all 23 MCU films and in now, timeline order. And now Woo! we're watching WandaVision and it's fantastic. So good. That's all I have to say. I mean, like, I don't want to spoil too much with WandaVision because I, I don't want to, I want people to watch that. If you, ha- if you're sleeping on WandaVision, check Wake it out. Up. It's, uh, it's, it's very, there are parts I don't like, but generally, and it's not that it's slow. I like that it's slow. It's, God, we really got film school, Garrett, today. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't think we should just give everything a pass. I mean, they're su- like... No, that's like, true. We should want good stories. I don't know. like, But especially when we're dealing with a lot of our like female characters, like Wanda is an important character to do right at this point. She's very powerful, very pivotal in the MCU and in, in the comics even. So yeah, we gotta we gotta treat them with respect, I think. And uh, this show is treating House of M, the comic book arc, with a lot of respect, and it's doing it justice for me so far. And if you've not read House of M, I'm very excited for you to see how it plays out. 
they seem to be doing something like a sort of inverse to how house of M ends, which is really interesting. Uh, clearly deals with mutants and we don't have mutants in the MCU officially yet, but now okay, maybe okay. we do. So we'll see. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Check us out next time. That's our outro. And if you made it to the end of this incredibly long episode, congratulations. Mission accomplished. Go watch some Marvel movies. We'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.